Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going over some basic geometry. These are the types of questions that on your civil service test they'll typically, they'll typically ask these in word problems. Questions that'll say something to the effect of, you know, you, you're doing overhaul in a room, in a living room that has, that's this many feet by this many feet. What is the area of this room? Or you have a tank of water that holds this many gallons or it's these dimensions. Figure out the volume. So these questions aren't too difficult. The most difficult part about these is knowing the formulas. So if you look on the sheet of questions that goes with this, I have an entire page of formulas that you'll need to know. So we'll start out with the first ones. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of go over what the different things mean. And then when we'll get into, we'll get into actual practice problems later on in this video. But as you see there in the very first one, it has the square and rectangle. Underneath that, so square and rectangle. A is asking for area. L, they want to know the length. And W stands for the width. So if you have a square or a rectangle, typically means, let's say this is 4 by 4 and this is 8 by 4. This will typically be the width here, and this will typically be the length. So for the area of a square or rectangle, area equals length times width. That one's pretty simple. Next on the list I have circles. And on circles, the first one I have listed is the circumference. So if you have a circle like this, the circumference is the distance around the circle. Now that can be measured in millimeters, centimeters, inches, uh, you name it. You can, you can measure it in any, in any way that you want, uh, but the formula for circumference is C, which equals circumference, equals 2 pi r. Now for our purposes, pi is going to be 3.14. Now the actual number for pi is an infinite number. It, it, it never it never stops, so it's 3.14579. I don't even remember what all the numbers are, but typically on these types of problems, on these tests, they won't let you use a calculator. And if that's the case, 3.14 should be fine. It should get you close enough to whatever the actual answer is going to be so that you can figure it out, because these are usually multiple choice questions. But if for some reason they do let you use a calculator on the test, there's always a pi button on the, ca on the calculator somewhere. So anyways, to figure out the circumference of a circle, so the distance around a circle, um, you're going to multiply 2 times pi times r. So what r is is the radius. And when you have a circle, the diameter of the circle is the distance from one side to the other. The radius is half of that, the distance from the middle to one side. Okay, so to figure that out, let's say the diameter of this circle is 6, the radius will obviously be 3. So to figure out circumference, C equals 2 times pi times 3. Okay, also pretty simple. Now when we're getting into area, they might ask you what the area of a circle is, and you'll need to know that later on when we get into volume of, of cones and cylinders and things like that. But to figure out the area of a circle, so the area, again, they're going to be asking, what's the amount of space all in here? Very similar. A equals area times pi. So A equals pi, which for our purposes is 3.14 times R squared. So again, R is the radius. So let's say... Let's say you have a circle, we'll use the same example as last time, and the radius is 3. So the area is going to equal pi times 3 squared. 3 times 3 is 9, a equals pi times 9, and then you can multiply out 3.14 times 9. So that's how you find the area of a circle. So then we get into triangles, and with triangles, area equals one half times B times H. So for our purposes, B is going to be the base and H is going to be the height. Okay, so the area 
equals. So let's let's draw a triangle. So let's say the base here is two, and the height of the triangle is six. So the area is going to be one half times two times six. So six times two is twelve times one half. A equals one half times twelve. A equals six. Pretty simple. Once you know the numbers, all you have to do is plug them in for the different variables. So when we're trying to figure out volume, it's going to be pretty similar to area. We're going to have very similar formulas, and all we're going to want to do is plug in the same numbers. So for volume, on your sheet you'll see the volume of a cube. And that's going to be very much similar to figuring out the area of a square or a rectangle, and that the, the formula is just going to be C equals length times width times height. So when you have a three-dimensional uh -oh, three-dimensional cube, that's not a very good one, but you get the idea. The length, the width, and the height is three times three times three. Three times three is nine times three is twenty-seven inches cubed cubic inches. So that one's pretty sim simple. The next one we have the volume of a, a sphere or a ball and for that you're going to have, and again, this one says four-thirds times pi times radius cubed. If they don't give you a calculator on the test, chances are you won't have a question that's that involved. But in case you do, we'll be going over ones pretty similar to that later on in this video. But for, for this one, the volume equals 4 thirds times pi. Remember, for us, pi is 3.14 times the radius cubed. Okay? So pretty simple. You're just going to plug in those. I can't really draw a three-dimensional ball. But 3.14, you already know that. And let's say the radius is 2. So 2 cubed times pi times 4 over 3. And that's how you find the volume for that. Last couple for a cylinder. So a cylinder would be something like a paint can or a bucket and they're going to be asking you to find out how much how much liquid or water or paint or whatever that it can hold. And the formula for that is pretty simple. Uh, the volume of a cylinder is going to be A times H. So we'll have volume equals. Now the A stands for area. And so what you need to do when you're figuring out the volume of that is find the area of the base. So the base of the cylinder, you're going to need to use the, the area formula that we use for, circ for circles to find out the area of this times the height of the cylinder. Okay? And we'll go over practice questions like that later on. Finally, the last one is the volume of a cone. So the volume of a cone is going to be one third a h. And very much similar, a volume of a cone is like this. Think of, well, they don't really make a whole lot of traffic cones like this, but you get the point. You're going to figure out the area, so a is area, times the height. Let's say that's two, two feet. So it's going to be one third times the area of this base times the height, two feet. Okay? So now let's get into some practice questions. And if you look on page two of the download that came with this, we're going to start off with some pretty simple ones. We're just going to find out the basic area of a room that's a square or a rectangle. So number one, wants to know the area of a room that is 10 feet by 12 feet, right? And if we remember from our formulas, area equals length times width. So really, all you're going to be doing is 10 times 12. And if we multiply that through, that's 0, that's 2, placeholder, that's 0, that's 1, that's 120. So the area of that room, length times width, 
it's going to be 120 square feet. Pretty simple. Let's try number two. Same exact thing, only with just a little bit bigger numbers. So number two asks you the area of a room that is 33 feet by 21 feet. And remember, area equals length times width. So we're going to do 33 times 21. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Placeholder. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. So that's 3, 9, 6. So the area of a room that's 33 feet by 21 feet is going to be 693 square feet. Pretty easy. So let's move on to something that's a little bit more difficult. Question 3 asks us, what is the circumference of a Frisbee that is 9 inches in diameter? So remember, the circumference is the distance around a circle. So, what is the question? And let's set up our formula for circumference. If we remember from before, circumference equals 2 pi r. Pi being 3.14, r being the radius. Okay? So for circumference, we have a frisbee. It's a pretty good circle for freehand. And they say it's 9 inches in diameter. So from here, it's 9 inches from one end to the other. But if we remember, they want to know the radius. And what's a radius? A radius is half of the diameter. So a radius is the distance, whatever half of the diameter is. So this, the distance from the center of the circle to one of the edges is the radius. So if we know it's 9 inches across, a radius is always equal to half of the diameter. Okay? So now we know that since the diameter is 9, the radius for this problem will now equal 4.5. Okay, inches. Sorry, I always forget to add that at the end. <clears throat> so all we have to do is plug our radius into our formula and multiply across. So C, so circumference equals 2 times pi times 4.5. Okay, so then what we can do is we can multiply 2 and the 4.5, and, and that gives us 9. And then 9 times pi, and I'm not going to go through the multiplication, but it's 3.14 times 9. That will end up equaling 28.26 inches. And that's how we found our circumference. So let's try another one. Same exact thing, just with a little different numbers. Number 4 asks us, what is the circumference of a plate that has that is a 2.75 inches in radius? So remember, our formula is going to be C equals 2 pi r. And in our question, they already gave us the radius. So we have a plate, and it says the radius is 2.75, right? So all we have to do is plug in the numbers and multiply it through. So we'll do 2 times pi times 2.75. And what we can do is we can mul multiply the 2 and the 2.75, and that equals 5.5. Okay, just by 2.75 times 2 equals 5.5. And then we have 5.5 times pi, which again is 3.14 times 5.5 and that final answer is going to be 17.27 so the circumference of this plate <coughs> is 17.27 inches not too bad again all you have to do is take the numbers or the values that you know and just plug them into the formula so now that we have a good idea of how to do basic area let's try and move it move into volume and figure out how to figure out 
the volume of basic, pretty basic size things like a cube or a square or things like that. So if you look on your on your sheet and you look at number five, let's clear this. Number five is asking, what is the volume of a bedroom that is 10, 10 feet by 12 feet by 8 feet, right? And if we remember, the volume of a cube or a rectangle is length times width times height. So if we have a bedroom that is 10 feet wide by 12 feet long by 8 feet high, all we have to do is multiply them together. So 10 times 12 times, times 8. So 10 times 12 is 120 times 8. We can do that over here because that's pretty simple and easy to go through. So 120 times 8. 8 times 0 is 0, 8 times 2 is 16, carry the 1, 8 times 1 is 8, plus 1 is 960. So the volume of this room is going to be 960 cubic feet. See how we did that? All we did is take the numbers, we plugged them into the formula. So let's try number 6. Number 6 asks, there is a cube with one side of 8 inches. What is its volume? So again, volume of a cube or a square or a rectangle is going to be length times width times height. And what do we know? We know that a cube is just a three-dimensional square. So a cube, I'm going to try and draw a three-dimensional one. Let's see. That's not too bad. So it tells us that what one side is. And one side of this cube is 8 inches. And with a cube, we remember, it's just a three-dimensional square. With a square, all the sides are equal. So it's going to be 8 inches wide by 8 inches high by 8 inches long because it's just a square and everything's equal. So the length equals 8, the width equals 8, and the height equals 8. These are all inches. So 8 times 8 times 8 is going to give us our volume. 8 times 8, 64. 64 times 8, 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 6 is 48, it's 51. So now the volume is going to equal 512 cubic inches. Also, not too bad. Now let's try one that's a little bit more difficult. Number seven on your sheet, let's see. Number seven on your sheet says a volleyball has a diameter of six inches. What is its volume? So we know by the last, the last sentence, what is its volume? We know we're gonna be solving for volume. So let's figure out which formula we're gonna use. Are we gonna use the cube, the sphere, the cylinder, or the cone? So a, volley, a volleyball, most people know what a volleyball is. A volleyball is obviously a three-dimensional figure that's a sphere or a ball. So that tells us which, which formula we're going to be using. So if we look back on our sheet, the formula for a volume of a sphere or a ball is 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. Okay, so that's, gonna, that's, how we're gonna, that's the formula we're going to use to figure out exactly what the volume is going to be. So it also tells us in number seven that a volleyball has a diameter of six inches. So from one end of the ball to the other is six inches. So first thing we need to figure out is what the radius is. So if the diameter is six, remember the radius is going to be three because a radius is always half of the diameter. So R equals three. So all we have to do is plug our numbers in. So volume equals 4 over 3 times pi times 3 cubed. So when they're asking for you to square numbers or cube numbers, all you're literally doing is multiplying the number by itself 
by however many times it says here. So for example, 3 cubed is going to be 3 times 3 times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. Okay? So now when we rewrite this, it's going to go volume equals 4 over 3 times 5 times 27. So we're going to go over to the next page where we have a little bit more room to keep working. So we'll rewrite this over here. So b equals 4 over 3 times pi times 27. So if we remember from before, we can multiply the 4 thirds times the 27. And if you remember, if you look in the other video, in the other video with the multiplication of fractions and decimals and things like that, we talk, talk about how to multiply these out. So 4 over 3 times turning, turning a whole number into a fraction, all you have to do is put it over 1. 27 over 1, because 27 over 1 is the exact same thing as 27, we're just putting it in fraction form. And then we're going to multiply across. But remember, it's easier if we can simplify these, these fractions beforehand. So 3 can go into 27 9 times, and 3 goes into 1 3 times. So we're going to divide this by 3, and we get 1. Divide 27 by 3, and we get 9. And now all we're going to do is just multiply across. So now our new fraction is 4 times 9 is 36, and 1 times 1 is 1. Remember what I said, a whole number over 1 is the same thing as just the whole number. So 36 over 1 is the exact same thing as 36. So now volume equals pi times 36. And remember, for our purposes, we'll go over here. Volume equals pi times 36. Pi equals 3.14, just in case they don't let you use a calculator. And we're just going to multiply that times 36. So we'll have 3.14 times 36. You can do the math on your own, just because it'll take a little bit too long. But the answer of 3.14 times 36 equals 113.04 cubic inches. So again, literally all we did with this problem is we solved for whatever the radius was, and we plugged the radius in there. We cubed 3, so 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27 multiplied the 27, 27 over 1 times 4 over 3, which we did over here, which gave us 36 over 1, which is the same as 36, which left us with volume equals 3.14 or pi times 36, which gave us the volume of our volleyball, which is 113.04 cubic inches. So this next question is going to be the same idea, just a little bit more involved. And what it's going to want us to do is it's going to want us to work backwards. So if we look at number 8 on your sheet, it says a bucket has a height of 10 inches and a volume of 1,130.4 cubic inches. What is the diameter of the bucket? And remember that a bucket is the same thing as a cylinder. And so a cylinder for the volume of a cylinder equals area times height. So since we're going to have to work backwards, it already gives us what the volume is. So let's just plug those numbers in. The volume is 1130.4, which is equal to, it doesn't give us the area, but it does give us the height of 10 inches. So what do we need to do? We need to solve for the area. So what we'll do is we'll divide by 10 on both sides to get the, to isolate the A and 1130.4 divided by 10 is going to give us A equals 
0.04. Okay, so now we're solving for the area. We're trying to figure out the area or the base of that bucket. What's going to be the area of that circle? So now let's go over to the next page. We know area is 113.04, and now we need to solve A equals pi times the radius squared. That's going to be our formula we're going to plug A into. So now we have 113.04 equals pi r squared. So since we're trying to figure out what the radius was originally, we're going to divide pi on both sides, which remember for our purposes since technically we're not using a calculator, this is going to be 3.14. So we'll put that right here next to it. And 113.04 divided by 3.14 gives you r squared equals 36. 113.04 divided by 3.14 gives you 36. And remember, this r squared, we're just bringing it down here because we're getting rid of the pi by dividing it on both sides. And r squared equals 36. So now we need to find out what the square root of 36 is. So, so stay with me. I know that this is a little more confusing and a little more involved than the others. But to figure out a, another way to word this is when r squared equals 36, what you want to ask yourself is what times what equals 36? The answer is 6. 6 times 6 equals 36. So essentially that's called finding the square root. And on your calculator, if you have a calculator, it'll look something a button that looks some, somewhat similar to this. My drawing skills aren't the best. But the square root of 36 will give us r equals 6. So now, that's good. We figured out what the radius was, because remember, the last question in number 8 asks us, what is the diameter of the bucket? So the radius we know is 6. And what's the rule with the diameter and the radius? The radius is always half of the diameter. So all we're going to do is double 6, because that's half of the diameter. So now, the diameter equals 12. 6 plus 6 equals 12. So again, if you have trouble with that, go ahead and rewind. Re take another look at the different formulas and how we use those and plug those in, and rewatch it as many times as you get. There's a few steps in there, and that one can get a little bit more confusing, but the final answer to what the diameter of the bucket is, is 12. So for number nine, I have written on there, see the video, because I'm going to draw out a triangle and we're going to figure out what the lengths of the sides are. But before we get into drawing out, well, actually, let's do it this way. I'll draw out the problem. And what we need to figure out is the lengths of one of the sides. So the triangle is going to look like this. And you will probably see something like this on one of your tests. So if that's our triangle, and we have one side is 6, and one side is 10, let's use inches. One side's 6 inches, one side's 10 inches, but this wants us to solve for x. It wants to know what is the distance in inches on this? If this side is 6 inches and this side is 10 inches, what will it be? So if you look back on your formula sheet, you see something called the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, And what that, what that is, is those are the three different sides of a triangle. So all we have to do is plug these numbers in. Now, one thing we need to talk about is what's known as the hypotenuse. And as you see here, it says the set on your formula sheet, it says the side of the triangle across from the right angle. So a right angle is a 90 degree angle, which is right here. So if we look at the side of the triangle that's directly across from that, that's the hypotenuse. That's the longer side. 
Okay, so let's plug these numbers in. So we have A equals 6 inches, B equals X, we don't know, that's what we're trying to figure out, and C, the longest side, equals 10 inches. So let's bring that over here. So 6 squared plus B squared equals 10 squared. So if we have our A squared plus B squared squared equals C squared. So remember, we've figured out that side A is going to be 6 inches. So 6 squared plus side B is what we're trying to solve. So we'll leave that as B squared equals side C, which is the hypotenuse, the side across from the right angle, is 10 squared equals 10 squared. So now, remember, when we're squaring, think of it as 6 times 6 or 10 times 10. So 6 times 6 is 36 plus, pen's not working, B squared equals 10 times 10 is 100. Okay? So now, let's simplify this equation. We'll subtract 36 from both sides so we can get B all by itself. Minus 36. 100 minus 36 is going to be 64. So now, B squared equals 64. Now what we need to do is we need to find out the square root of 64. And if they give you a calculator, it's easy. All you do is you hit the button that looks kind of like this, and um, it'll tell you. But if they don't give you a calculator, the easier way that I can think of it is what times what equals 64? Well, 8 times 8 equals 64. So the square root of 64 equals 8. Okay? So now B equals 8. Make sense? Like I say with all these problems, if, you, if, if we went over that too quickly or you missed something, feel free to rewind. But the answer is this will now be 8 inches. 6 inches, 8 inches, and 10 inches are going to be the sides of your triangle. Now number 10 on your sheet, I also have C written on there as C video because this one's going to involve a little bit of drawing too. Now this one is going to be pretty similar. And what they want us to find out, let's get back to page 1, what they want us to find out is the area of a trapezoid. So they might give you some sort of weird shape like this. So number 10, and feel free to draw along you. Hopefully your drawings are better than mine. You got that end. Then we have this end. And they'll give you a shape that looks something like this with two triangles on either side that, are, that aren't exactly um, the same, but just different dimensions. So let's say this is one inch. All of these will be in inches. Actually, let's erase that. That's hard to read. So this is one. The side of this rectangle, in this middle rectangle, the side of this rectangle is going to be 10. Remember, we're working in inches side of the top, this top of the triangle is going to be 10. The height of this rectangle is going to be 6. And then the wall of this triangle is going to be, let's say, 4. Okay? So what we need to do is, as you can see, we have two triangles. One out here. Let's use a highlighter. Let's see how this looks. We have a triangle here. And we have a triangle here. And then in the middle, let's use let's use light blue. We have a rectangle. And so when you get a question like this and they want you to figure out what the area is, what you need to do is you need to do three separate problems and figure out what the area of all three shapes are. So triangle one. So let's go back to the pen. So what they want you to, we'll call this triangle one, T1. We'll call this rectangle. And we'll call this 
T2. So the easiest one to do is the area of a rectangle. If you look back on your sheet, if you can't remember, area is length times width. So we see that the length, or the width, either one, is 10 times 6. So the rectangle equals 10 times 6. That's going to give us an area of 60 square inches. Remember, we're using inches. I'm just not going to write it on every single number. So square inches. Triangle 1, let's say this one. Remember, the formula for this is 1 half times the base times the height. So this is the base of this triangle right here. And the height is 6. We already know that because it's the same height as this rectangle. So if we plug in the numbers, T1 equals 1 half times 4 times the height, which is 6. Remember, we just got that from there. The base is 4. The height is 6. 6 times 4 is 24 times 1 half equals 12. So the area for T1, that's an R, sorry. The area for triangle 1 over here is 12 square inches. Okay, and then we'll move over, uh, we could probably squeeze it in here. It's going to be the exact same thing for triangle 2. Triangle 2 is going to be 1 half times the base, in this case, which is 1, just this little area right here, times 6. That's the height, right? Because it's the same height as the rectangle. Exact same thing we did with triangle 1. So 6 times 1 is 6 times 1 half equals 3. So the area of triangle 2 is 3 square inches. Okay? So now to figure out the area of all these, all we have to do is add up the areas of each individual one. The rectangle, triangle 1, and triangle 2. So we have 60 square inches. We'll go over here. 60 square inches plus 12 square inches plus 3 square inches. So this is rectangle, this is T1, this is T2. So 60 times 12 is 72 square inches plus 3 square inches. 72 plus 3 is 75 square inches. And that is going to be our area. Because remember, we were solving for area of this trapezoid. And so that's going to be our final answer. Final answer to the area of all of these is going to be 75 square inches. So as you can see, the key to all this is just knowing your formulas. As long as you know your formulas, it shouldn't be that difficult. It's usually just basic addition or subtraction or multiplication or division. So for our last question on our sheet, number 11, this is by far going to be the toughest one, but we can get through it. Number 11 says the tire on engine 5 can roll 188.4 feet in 30 revolutions. What is the radius of the tire in inches? Now this one's tough because it's telling us how far it can roll in feet, but it's asking for inches. So if the tire can, first thing we need to do is convert, convert everything to inches. If it says right there that 188.4 feet in 30 revolutions, what is the radius of the tire in inches? Let's convert those feet to inches. We all know that there's 12 inches in one foot. So we'll take the 188 Point four feet times twelve, since we know that there's twelve inches in each one of those each one of those feet, and that's going to give us two thousand two hundred and sixty point eight inches. So twenty two sixty point eight inches. That is the equivalent, again, in case you miss it, of 188.4 feet is the same as two thousand two hundred and sixty point eight inches. Okay, and all we did there was multiply it by 12. Now, the question also tells us 
that the tire can roll now, we're gonna plug in our own numbers, 2,260.8 inches and 30 revolutions. So what do we need to do now? We need to divide 2,260.8 divided by 30. And we're choosing 30 because it's telling us that this is how far it can go and this many revolutions. So what we're trying to figure out is exactly how far it goes in one full revolution. So 2,260.8 divided by 30, you know, I'm not going to go through all the math here, it'll take a little bit too long, but it comes out to 75.36 inches. And again, that's just 2260.8 divided by 30. Now, if we remember from our formulas, the circumference is equal to the distance around. So what we just figured out was the circumference of this tire, because this is how, in one revolution, this is how many inches it travels. So now, now that we have the circumference, we figure out that our formula for circumference is C equals two times pi times the radius. Well, we already know what C is, okay? So we're gonna go over here rewrite this so we have more room c equals 2 pi r and we know our circumference is this so let's rewrite this as 75.36 75.36 equals 2 times pi times r okay so what we're trying to solve for is r so we want to isolate r over here so the first thing we can do is we can divide by two on both sides. So then that leaves us with 75.36 divided by two is 37.68. And that equals pi times r, okay? So again, this is just basic algebra. We went over this in one of the other videos. And now we still wanna isolate this r so we're gonna divide both sides by pi, which remember, in our case is 3.14. So, divide this side by the same, 3.14. And that final answer gives us 12. So 37.68 divided by 3.14 equals 12. Now remember, if we go back to our question, it asks us what is the radius of the tire in inches? So the radius equals, oh, my pen stopped working, equals 12 inches. Okay, so just a quick recap. We had to figure out how many inches is 188.4 feet. So we multiplied 188.4 times 12 inches are in a foot. So 188.4 times 12 equals 2,260.8 inches. Then the question told us that there's 30 revolutions to go that distance. So to travel the 2,260.8 inches, it takes 30 revolutions. So we divided 2260.8 divided by 30 to figure out how far one of those 30 revolutions, how many inches it travels. That was our circumference. Remember, the circumference is the distance around a circle. So we knew that their circumference is 75.36 inches. We also know that to solve for circumference, the formula is C equals two pi r. So we just plugged in our numbers. We, we knew 75.36 now equals two times pi times r. So we divide when we wanted to solve for the radius. So we divided by two on both sides, which gave us 37.68 equals pi r, and then we divided by pi, or 3.14 in our case, on both sides, and that gave us 12. 37.68 divided by 3.14 equals 12. So now we know the radius of this tire is 12 inches. So like I always say with all these problems, if, if we went too fast on something or we missed something, feel free to rewind, use these practice questions, come up with your own and do it until you can get it down and you have it figured out. Feel free to practice as much or as little as you want. You have full access to these videos and I hope you found it helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.